dog sausage. That's right, we're doing a hot dog flavored sausage. Or as it will hopefully become known as hot dogage. And with the Memorial Day weekend coming up, I wanted to share a recipe for the grill that was, what's the word I'm looking for? Memorable. So let me show you how we're gonna put this together and it all starts with the meat. And we're gonna use two kinds. We're gonna go with some lean ground beef as well as a little bit of ground pork. And to that, we're gonna add some very traditional hot dog seasonings. Starting with some kosher salt, as well as its good friend, freshly ground black pepper. And then the ingredient that gives hot dogs their signature color, paprika. Actually, let me rephrase that. The ingredient that's supposed to give hot dogs their color. Sorry, people that like red dye. We're gonna use paprika, and not one, but two kinds. So we'll add a whole bunch of regular paprika, as well as a little bit of smoked paprika. Since as you may know, hot dogs are traditionally smoked. And then we're also gonna need a little bit of granulated onion, as well as granulated garlic, which is also sometimes sold as garlic powder. And by the way, don't accidentally use onion salt and garlic salt, since that's different stuff. You can tell by the different name. And then last but not least, we're gonna finish this mixture off with some ice water. I know you probably didn't see that one coming, but that's gonna be very important in this to help us achieve the appropriate texture. And then using a very clean, well manicured hand, we will mix and mash that together very, very thoroughly. And as I'm doing this, you might be thinking to yourself, hey, wait a minute. I thought you're never supposed to overwork ground meat because if you overmix it, it gets kind of tough and chewy. Well, exactly, that's what we want. Okay, we don't want this thing ending up as just an inappropriately shaped hamburger. We're making hot dog sausages, so we do want that firmer, snappier, kind of chewier texture. So there is no need to worry about overmixing here. Get in there and get in there good and keep mixing and mushing, smushing and smearing until your mixture looks like this. At which point we'll clean up the edges of the bowl a little bit and then we'll wrap it in plastic and refrigerate it for at least a couple hours to let the flavors develop. Overnight's probably best, but like I said, a couple hours is fine. And then once our meat mixture has chilled thoroughly, we're ready to form it into the classic hot dogged shape, which is really easy if you do two things. Use plastic wrap and some ice water for your hands. So we will want to dip our fingers into some water so the meat does not stick. And I'm going to place down one quarter of our mixture, which is just over six ounces. And we'll give that just a quick initial shaping before folding over the plastic, which is gonna allow us to shape this without touching the meat. Not that we're afraid to touch meat, we've touched it many times before. But as you can see by using the plastic, we can kind of push and manipulate that meat into the appropriate shape. And of course, ideally you want these as long as your buns are. So once I think I have it pretty close, I'll give it a little roll to test its uniformity, and then we'll go ahead and unwrap it and do any fine tuning if needed. So let's go ahead and see what we got. And that is looking pretty good. But if you want, you could dip your hands back into the ice water and do a little fine tuning. I do prefer the ends of my hot dog sausages symmetrical. So we'll do a little fine tuning if necessary, at which point we'll just wrap these back up and kind of twist the ends a little bit. And we can just throw those on a plate and refrigerate until we're ready to cook, which by the way, I am. But before I go ahead and cook a couple, let me show you a little trick. Because these are a little soft and fragile, I like to use a folded up piece of aluminum foil to carefully transfer these onto the grill. So we'll just fold up a few layers of foil and then we'll kind of bend the bottom up into a little bit of a J shape and then we'll use that to gently roll these onto the grill. And yes, if you're careful, you can easily place these down using two hands, but I just find that a little safer and easier. And then once they're down, of course, don't touch them right away. Just let that first side grill and seal for at least two minutes. All right, what you don't want to do is this. I just had to stick it under there. I just had to see if it was sticking, which is just not prudent. Because if you're using some nice seasoned cast iron grates and you don't touch them, after a couple minutes, you'll be able to turn them very easily just like this. And by the way, you're gonna to wanna to turn these completely over. All right, if you just give them a quarter turn, they may start to curve and bend. So we will wanna turn that over to the exact opposite side, just like that. So I'll turn this one, and as you can see, cause I played with it, some of it stuck, but that wasn't a big deal. I eventually got it turned over properly. And then the good news is once both sides have been cooked for a couple minutes, this thing will keep its shape beautifully and we'll continue until all the sides are nicely browned and the meat is cooked through, just like if you were cooking any kind of fresh sausage. So I continued cooking mine until they look gorgeous and I had determined they were cooked to an appropriate level of doneness. You could use a thermometer, but I just went by feel. And at that point, we'll pull these off the grill and hopefully insert them into a nice white soft hot dog bun, which yes, I should have toasted. So we will pop that into a bun and dress with the condiments of our choice, which for me is just some good old fashioned yellow mustard. So let me go ahead and squeeze some on without trying to make it look awesome on purpose. Take that food stylus. So a little bit of mustard. And as you can see, I decided to enjoy mine with some chips and a pickle. 
And because I ordered the combo, mine came with a Belgian white owl, which I think makes a beautiful garnish. And at that point, our hot dog sausage is ready to enjoy. And I'm telling you what, if I handed you one of these and the light wasn't good and you were kind of drunk, you would totally think you were eating a really, really good hot dog. I mean, the flavor profile is almost exact. And thanks to that ice water and mixing process, the texture is nothing like a hamburger. All right, it's much firmer. It has that kind of snappy chew to it that's way closer to a hot dog or sausage. And as I mentioned earlier, this would look very, very nice coming off your Memorial Day grill. But anyway, that's it. Hot dog sausage, also known as hot doggage. What it lacks in slaughterhouse scraps, red dye, and sheep intestines, it more than makes up for with its amazing taste and catchy name. So I really do hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.